epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. Over the years, many roller coasters have come and gone. Whether they fall into disrepair or the park simply decides they aren't profitable anymore, we've discussed these kind of defunct attractions before on this channel. But what about the rides that almost closed? The ones that seem to be destined for the chopping block, only to make a triumphant comeback? Well, as voted on by the viewers, we're going to take a look at 10 of these coasters today. Now, we're going to be talking about a few hair-raising moments in history here. Speaking of which, today's video is sponsored by a brand I'm truly excited to talk about, Keeps. Now, I know firsthand how hair loss can affect your confidence and self-esteem, as it's something that runs in my family. But thanks to Keeps, I found a solution that really works, and I want to share it with you. With Keeps, you can get expert care for your hair loss right at home without stepping into a pharmacy. And the best part? Keeps matches you with a personal treatment plan tailored to your unique needs, recommended by licensed medical providers. Keeps treatments are FDA approved and clinically proven to work. These include a 2-in-1 gel that reduces hair loss and stimulates growth for maximum effectiveness. According to clinical studies, Keeps treatments are 90% effective at treating hair loss and can increase hair growth by up to 35%. And if you're like my uncle, you want results fast. With Keeps, most customers notice a difference within just 6 months of treatment. Talk about impressive. Of course, Keeps understands that privacy and discretion matter. So all treatments are discreetly delivered to your door in non-branded packaging, and you're free to message your medical provider anytime through their secure portal. Over the last six years, Keeps has treated over 1 million men experiencing hair loss with only science-backed ingredients. And with over 5,000 five-star reviews, it's clear why. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video and for the free product. Hair loss stops with Keeps. For a special offer to get started, go to keeps.com slash themeparkcrazy or click the link in the description. That's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash themeparkcrazy. Special thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Anyway, let's get to the video. Number 10, Black Diamond at Pennsylvania's Knobles Amusement Resort. All the way back in 1960, this powered coaster dark ride hybrid got its start on the Jersey Shore. More specifically, it opened on the old Hunts Pier as Gold Nugget. As its name implied, this coaster was themed to a gold mine, and its structure was partially enclosed inside a Wild West themed facade. The inside took guests into the mines, while the top of the coaster was a brief outdoor section through a desert, featuring a skeleton cowboy and horse. In 1996, the park was renamed Dinosaur Beach, with all of its attractions, including Gold Nugget, having dinosaur theming added to them. Let's be honest though, everything is better with dinosaurs, even oatmeal. Still, this coaster wasn't to last, as Dinosaur Beach and its attractions closed in 1998. After being acquired by the Mori family, it was discovered that the coaster was in horrible condition. The wooden structure was lined with asbestos, and it would cost at least $3 million to bring it up to modern building codes. After almost a decade of sitting abandoned, the coaster was slated for demolition, with the Mori family planning a farewell ceremony on January 31st, 2009. But not so fast, because just five days before the ceremony, it was announced that Knobles had acquired the coaster. Park president Dick Knobles said, quote, I've always liked the Golden Nugget, and we're excited about bringing it to Knobles. With that, the coaster was moved to the Keystone State, and it would reopen as Black Diamond in 2011. The coaster's structure was brought up to date, and the ride would be fully enclosed from then on. While the new ride doesn't have dinosaurs, it still does take place in a mine, albeit a haunted one. Nowadays, this ride continues to operate as an unsettling and memorable coaster experience that you can't miss when visiting the park. Number 9, Regina 2 at Japan's Tobu Zoo. First opening in the year 2000, this wooden coaster currently operates at Tobu Zoo, an amusement park zoo hybrid in the city of Saitama. Not to be confused with the One Punch Man. Built by Swiss manufacturer Intamin, this coaster was designed by Dennis Starkey, the same man who designed the excellent Viper at Six Flags Great America, among others. Though it ranked among the tallest and fastest wooden coasters in Asia, Regina suffered from deterioration over time. In August 2019, Tobu Zoo announced the ride's closure, saying that the coaster had to be closed that month for safety reasons. 
Although this coaster seemed destined for the junkyard, park fans and employees alike voiced their disapproval of the ride's closing. Realizing how dedicated the coaster's fanbase was, the park changed course and sought to refurbish it. Eventually, this makeover would take place thanks to American manufacturers Skyline Attractions and Great Coasters International. Both companies would work together to renovate the coaster, bringing its structure up to date and including some spiffy new Millennium Flyer trains. Finally, in 2023, the coaster made its grand reopening as the newly named Regina 2, predating the announcement of Top Thrill 2's name. Number 8. Giant Dipper at California's Belmont Park Not to be confused with the coaster of the same name at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, this Giant Dipper first opened in San Diego in 1925, making it nearly 100 years old. However, it's arguably a miracle that it even got half as old as that. In addition to being severely damaged by a fire in 1955, the park fell into disrepair in the 1970s. The ride, which was then under private ownership, was slated for demolition. The abandoned coaster had become an eyesore on the property, and developers wanted to tear it down. Shortly thereafter, though, members of the public rallied together to prevent the coaster's demise. A committee named Save the Coaster was formed, which sought to have the coaster recognized as a national landmark. Although the committee were able to get the coaster a preservation grant, they were initially unable to secure enough resources to open the coaster again. Fortunately, a new Belmont Park shopping center was being planned for the area, and this brought new interest in the underdeveloped park. Committee members and shopping center developers sought help from the Santa Cruz Seaside Company, who operated the aforementioned Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, to refurbish the coaster. Two million dollars later, this renovation was completed, and the coaster reopened on August 11, 1990. In total, 14 years were spent getting the coaster to reopen, further proving that you can never underestimate the power of perseverance. Number 7. X Coaster at Arkansas's Magic Springs this is a bit of an odd case. First opening in 2006 in the city of Hot Springs, this coaster was built by German manufacturer Mara Rides. The model, known as a Skyloop, is a bizarre compact coaster with zero turns. Basically, guests are taken up a vertical chain lift which then goes upside down. Passengers are then sent downwards through a twisting Skyloop element before returning to the station. As of right now, there are only 10 of these coasters operating around the world, and only one is in the United States. If it were up to the park though, this coaster wouldn't have that honor. In 2009, this coaster was closed for the entire season while the park waited on parts for Europe, and dealt with weather delays and shipping. Then in 2012, park officials announced the coaster would be closing to make room for a water park expansion. But as the years went on, this coaster stayed standing and operating. Though not confirmed by the park themselves, it's often reported that officials were initially aiming to sell the attraction. Then, after finding a buyer, they realized the track was welded together, making the planned disassembly much more complicated and expensive. If true, this is one of the only instances where a coaster is reluctantly left operating by its own park. Either way, this attraction is an extremely memorable and unique experience, and it's one you should check out while you can. Number 6. The Flying Fish at England's Thorpe Park Long before the days of naked coaster enthusiasts, stealth-themed condoms, and literal pissing contests, Thorpe Park once had a much more family-friendly image when it first opened. In fact, its first roller coaster was a family attraction. Originally opening in 1983 as an enclosed coaster named Space Station Zero, this ride was later rethemed to the Flying Fish in the early 90s. This powered roller coaster was built by German manufacturer Mach Rides. Believe it or not, this was the park's only roller coaster until the opening of X No Way Out in 1996, over a decade later. As such, the ride is still loved by longtime fans of the park. And when the Flying Fish closed to make room for stealth in 2004, these fans were royally pissed off. Thorpe Park had awakened a hornet's nest of fan fury, and this popular demand led to the coaster's reopening in 2007, albeit in a different area of the park. Nowadays, it can be found between the top of Swarm's Lift Hill and the Amity Beach Water Park. All I can say is that despite not being battered or served with a side of fries, don't worry, I know they're called chips there, this fish has proven to be a fan favorite among the locals. 
Number 5. The Wizard at Illinois Six Flags Great America This longtime fan favorite first opened as an opening day attraction for the park. It also opened at California's Great America back when both parks were known as Marriott's Great America. Though the one in California closed down in 1988, the Wizard still remains a unique attraction in Illinois. However, in 2002, Six Flags announced the coaster would be closing to make room for a new B&M flying coaster. Final rides were set for August 11th of that year, with the park planning a loving send-off. However, the backlash was pretty much immediate, with thousands of park fans calling on Six Flags to save the Wizard. Petitions were signed, angry letters were written, and in the end, the park reversed course and agreed not to tear down the Wizard. Or at least, that's what they officially said. As it turned out, the park ended up closing their problematic Shockwave coaster instead, with the new Superman Ultimate Flight coaster being put in the ride's old spot. This led many to speculate that Six Flags had always planned on closing Shockwave, and was only pretending to remove the wizard to drum up support for the old classic. But this is just online speculation and has not been officially proven. Number 4. Phoenix at Knobles Amusement Resort As it stands, this ride is considered to be perhaps the world's best wooden roller coaster. With its non-restrictive buzz bar restraints, lack of seat belts, and powerful airtime moments, Many consider the experience to rival the taller and faster wooden coasters out there. But while Phoenix is considered to be a signature attraction for Knobles, this ride wasn't originally built for the park. In fact, it got its start all the way down in San Antonio, Texas in 1947. Then known as the Rocket, this attraction was once promoted as the largest coaster in the world, which was a bit of a stretch but still drove many to give it a ride. By the late 1970s, the park's condition had severely deteriorated, with the wooden coaster described as rickety by former park guests. Eventually, the park closed in 1980, with the coaster standing abandoned for years. Once again on this list, Knobles came to the rescue, purchasing the attraction for just half a million dollars, which was only about a third of what a new roller coaster would cost at the time. On the other hand, moving the coaster to Pennsylvania proved to be a true undertaking, and according to RCDB, the relocation and reassembly cost an additional $1.5 million, with 34 trucks needed for the move. This was only made harder by the ride's blueprints being unavailable, so every single wooden board had to be numbered so they would know which piece went where. Fortunately, the move was a rousing success, and the coaster still operates as a must-do attraction today. Number 3. Gemini at Ohio Cedar Point this beloved steel hybrid racing coaster has been entertaining park guests ever since it opened in 1978. In addition to its surprising airtime moments, being able to race another train added a whole nother level of excitement to the ride. Considering how the ride is approaching its 50th anniversary, you may be surprised to know that it was once on the chopping block in the early 2000s. Not many people have heard about this, as it was merely a brief possibility. But during the development of Top Thrill Dragster, designers reportedly sought to make the launch track longer than it ended up being. They were said to have preferred a longer launch in order to power the trains enough to complete the 420-foot top hat. However, making the launch too long would have required the complete removal of Gemini. It's unknown if the park substantially considered this, but at some point the decision was made to keep Gemini where it was. In the end, Intamin was able to make the launch track shorter, sparing Gemini from the scrapyard and allowing it to remain operational today. Number 2. The Cyclone at New York's Luna Park Found at the world-famous Coney Island, this is perhaps the most iconic roller coaster on Earth. First opening in 1927, this coaster quickly became a staple of Brooklyn, delivering thrilling turns, steep dips, and jubilant airtime. Despite its widespread fame though, the coaster, and the area as a whole, went through a rough patch in the 1960s. According to the New York Times, an increase in crime and poor weather, as well as insufficient parking, led to a serious decline in attendance around that time, and officials nearby planned to tear it down to expand the nearby New York Aquarium. But just like with other instances on this list, hell hath no fury like a coaster fan scorned. Over the next few years, members of the public engaged in the Save the Cyclone campaign. Despite the constant threat of demolition, efforts were made to find someone to lease the coaster and have it designated as a national landmark. 
By 1975, these efforts came into fruition, with the nearby Astroland in Brooklyn acquiring the coaster. Nowadays, the property is owned by Italian manufacturer Zamperla, and the cyclone continues to stand as a world-famous icon. Number 1. Wildfire at Sweden's Kolmordan Like the Tobu Zoo, Kolmordan is yet another amusement park zoo hybrid, but the coaster at this park is much grander in scale. In fact, many consider it to be among the most insane wooden coasters out there. Standing tall above the Broviken, Bro Broviken, I think that's how you pronounce it, this coaster is built by American manufacturer Rocky Mountain Construction. The layout is jam-packed with airtime moments, as well as a zero-g stall and two heartline rolls. By all means, it's a world-class wooden coaster. However, just months after its opening, it seemed like this amazing ride's run would be short-lived. Ever since the beginning of this ride's development, the local municipal government of Norrköping expressed concern at the ride's noise levels and its impact on the area's skyline. The main problem was that the coaster would be built right next to a nature reserve, and officials didn't want the ride to have a negative impact on it. Therefore, they pressed the park to come up with a sustainable and detailed development plan. Eventually, an operating permit was granted and the ride opened in June 2016. But that October, the permit was appealed and revoked, forcing the coaster to close. One politician was quoted as saying the park would likely have to remove the coaster. Meanwhile, the park claimed they got all the necessary paperwork done and were suddenly being told a different story by the municipal government. Apparently, this was all caused by a miscommunication and a compromise was eventually hammered out. Government officials requested the park to fill out a more detailed environmental impact assessment, and the park started the process immediately. Soon enough, this ride was all set to operate, and it continues to do so to this day. So which of these rides are you glad got to stick around the most? Feel free to leave a comment down below. And speaking of which, now it's time for the comment shoutout program. This is where I take five random comments from my previous video and read them out. These comments come from my failed coasters episode on Do Da Donpa. I love Ghost Rider 4533 says, Great video. Thank you, Ghost Rider. Samson Silvo says, The Icarus comparison honestly sums up what Fuji Q did with Dodonpa perfectly. The ride was already one of the most insane ever built, and it was, and they really didn't need to one-up it. Their desire to do so without making sure the ride was comfortable and, above all, safe in the long run was ultimately what doomed it. The real Hot Rod Jordan says, No, I wanted to ride this ride so bad. You Can Do It says, I really enjoyed this ride. I got to go on both versions. And Winged Azrath says, Interesting that people criticize the overhead restraints. Whenever I got to a park, I much prefer rides that use them, because I don't like getting bashed around in my seat. Especially after a bad experience on Rita at Alton Towers, and even more so after riding the Ultimate. If you want to see your words in my next video, leave a comment down below and it may be selected. Please note though that inflammatory or spam comments will not be read. Before we wrap things up, here's a special thanks to my newest Patreon supporters. Verbal shoutouts start at the Hyper tier, and if you don't hear your name now, it will be shown at the end of the video. Here is a special shoutout to Aggressive Blep, Brendan, Jeff Bonch, and Melanie. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Instagram and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. And I'm on TikTok. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.